All right, so. I don't know if I want us to uh, introduce ourselves first and then intro, or what? But, um, Let's introduce ourselves first. Yeah. Okay. So we'll say the clip starts now. <laughs> um, so my name is Chad. My name is Amanda. Um, you may or may not know us from a podcast called The Secular Perspective. Mm -hmm. We tend to talk about um secularism religion stuff like that um lately there's been a little bit of politics involved since it's a oh, yeah. since it's an election year but we do find news stories and stuff that tends to be a little more serious topics and well I, it's I serious but then we laugh at we it. laugh at stuff and we try to make light of it because it is some of it's pretty heavy stuff we've talked about abortion we've talked about the duggars um planned parenthood well that's abortion stuff um we just talk, we talk about all kinds of stuff that would sometimes have a little bit of a, a religious slant to it. Um, and it's, you know, you can only talk about that so much. And we do tend to derail our own conversation. So this is going to be a little experiment. Um, we're going to record this as a podcast and also do some videos, see how it goes. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to cue our intro. All right, so that is our fun, uh, I think fun anyway, intro music. <laughs> that uh, It sounded like an Irish jig because it was coming out of your headphones. Oh. Like, so it was hitting me. There's like this little tiny noise. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I want to give credit to the guy that wrote that. That's actually just an edited version of a, a song that was about twice as long. Um, that's, it's what they call chip tune. I know you said it sounded kind of video gamey, mm -hmm. which is kind of the point of something like that. Um, but the artist's name is Azure Flux, which like Azure is like the color of the sky. Like that's the color of blue is pronounced. It's Azure. Um, but he goes by Azure Flux. Um, I found his, uh, found some of his music on the Free Music Archive, actually. You can go check him out. Um, that song was actually called Intro. <laughs> I like that. So I was like, I just like, you know what, I gotta hear this. Because I was looking for a theme song for this. I was like, okay, it's actually, it's actually fitting. Um, but he did an album called Pocket Boy. Um, I don't know if that's supposed to be a play on Game Boy or what that is. But um, you can find him there. Um, I'll have a link to... Uh, his page on the free music archive he's actually got several albums um a lot of chip tune type of stuff which is that video gamey 8-bit 16-bit yeah. kind of nintendo-y type sound which every now and then i do like like it's just one of my little guilty pleasures sometimes i'll go listen to something like that because i'm a gamer so um but this show uh we are calling it chad and amanda talk shit about and then it can be about whatever we want we do tend to derail our conversations quite a bit. Yeah, we need um, an outlet. And we needed an outlet. So this is going to be that outlet. Um, we can talk about whatever we want. Mm -hmm. um, we'll usually have some kind of a topic. Uh, we'll probably talk about news stories. Like the off-the-wall news stories, I think, would be the best. Just some of that stuff that you look at and you're just like, what the fuck is this? Um, or something that makes me laugh, something that makes you laugh, whatever. Because um, we need some more fun stuff to talk about. I'm tired of talking about somewhat serious stuff all the time. Because um, I love me some dick and fart jokes. <laughs> um, oh, you gotta move the fan. You gotta move the fan? Okay. Oh, goodness. Um, you you better now? Yeah, I felt like Ms. I was Wendy. in a shampoo commercial. We'll start calling commercial. you Wendy. Um, but anyway. Damn, it's hot, too. It's, yeah, it's a little stuffy up in here. We've actually been... We just finished recording for the other show, and I mean, it's got a lot of hot air, so this room's got pretty warm. It got, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> and we got a fan going Actually, down kinda, on low. I was kind of punch drunk in our last show. I'm coming down right now. Oh, are you? It's tough. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we've done a few things here. Um, 
not really a lot, but like I remember last week, after or not last week, a couple of weeks ago, right after our show, right I was like, after. listen, I was like, look at this, and I sent Chad this link because that's how we talk over Facebook, pretty much. And it says Hitler has a micro penis, which explains a lot, really, when it comes <sighs> down to it. That's what my husband said. He's like, I, I bet everybody's gonna be like, well, that explains World War II. <laughs> It was just a... And he's like, I don't want people to say that. I want people to be like, oh, the all man's struggle relates back to his dick. You know? Whatever. He, he, was not, he rolled his eyes at it. I was laughing. We got, okay, it's up for debate whether or not he has a micro penis. Because, I mean, what, how, did, how did anybody find this out? Did they go dig up his corpse and look? Like, no, you know, honestly, did you was, read the article? Because, yes. honestly, I did not read the article. Oh, I saved you, it. You we'll fill, me, fill me in on some, some penis. Wait, that penis. sounded really bad. <laughs> 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 Let me retract that. Fill, fill me in on what you learned about Hitler's penis. I, okay. Okay. N the news outlets grabbed a hold of this and said, he's got a micro penis. that's what it means. Well, th that's up for debate. What's not up for debate is, I want to say, I mean, left, his left testicle was undescended. One of his testicles was undescended. Like, like this is completely, so... It was, so up, that, it was up in his so, body so, still. So to the average person or a woman he would have been with, they reached out and grabbed, they would have felt just one nut. It was I one guess. nut Hitler. One nut, one nut Hitler. And um, that's actually what Adolf means. <laughs> <laughs> it's one nut. When it's nut. translated. <laughs> wow. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then they also you had, you said. You had me for just a second. You, no, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. So, and then, wait, what's the other? You can scroll if you need to. Oh, we have, well, it Hypo, says. Hypo, wait. Hypospadius. Has hypospadias. I don't know how you pronounce that. Hypospadias? I don't know. Whatever. It's that condition. It only means his urethra was on the underside of his penis instead of shooting out straight. Oh, it Looking at you like a bullseye. Yeah, it came out. Well, it, basically, his urethra came out and took a dive and went underneath so instead rather of than, so straight let's, and straight. Let's say this is the. We're doing this on video, so people that are listening to this instead of watching, I'm sorry, this is kind of a visual thing. But so. I'm not touching your penis I, hand. <laughs> But I'm just saying, rather than come out this way, yeah, it would through. come down more yeah, something like urethra, that. There, and then, whoop, and then it, yeah. there, whoo, okay. he's peeing out the underside of his, okay. of his penis. Wow, shaft. that's okay. Mm -hmm. Weird. So we don't know if it was unusually small. They're saying this is from his doctor in prison. Notice this. Oh, okay. And wrote it down on medical files. And they said it was documented somewhere else um, with with his doctor, maybe, but... This, this isn't new. This like there's been like even the British made fun of him and yeah. said he had like something wrong with his <laughs> yeah. like penis back back during World War Two. Well, yeah, you kind of would. But well, who knows? It was like a rooted in fact a little bit. Oh, I, I guess mean, now, yeah. I think maybe something got out and it was like a rumor born halfway out of the truth. Well, you know, that's how most rumors and stereotypes start. Is like you get that oh, just that little that it. little bit and then. It goes, um, which I find really funny that this happened now because there have been with, with Trump in the news so much, there has been so <laughs> oh, and many, his hands, his hands yeah. which leads into, he's like, Oh, you know, if you got small hands, you must have a small penis. And my, you know, I'm surprised he didn't just flat out say, Oh, it's huge. And I've never had a complaint in that department, but I'm surprised he didn't flat out say something like that. But, or no, did they he, were did talking he? about dick sizes oh, during I know. the geo. I didn't watch it. I, I I refused to let my brain cells die no, watch by watching it. them. But you know, I saw highlights later or heard about it. I wasn't surprised it devolved into like dick I mean, that's, size. That's seriously where we're at now. That's terrible. But I just I found it so funny that this story came out at the same time people were making all these Hitler comparisons, and then the dick size thing came out it's in the strategic. debate. I'm like, oh my god, this stuff is all just lining up. It's strategic. Perfectly. Like, let's say that right now. It's, but why? Like, I don't get it. Like, it's seriously like the the GOP debates and the whole GOP party is like it's totally devolved to like high school, almost middle school mentality. Come you know, May we may be in elementary school and kindergarten. I don't know. 
I don't know. It seems to be what people want. It scares me. So I had two things here highlighted. Pretty much the same article. I think this is... This, okay, the men's health article. It's called, Did Hitler Really Have a Micro Penis? They get more... They get more... Scientific medic- about okay. it and say, uh, okay, it doesn't mean it was totally deformed. <laughs> but, but if you guys But it check- was deformed. Yeah. But what I love about this, if you guys go check out this article i'll have a link I love to it. it they actually have like just kind of a little line drawing of hitler but it's like shaped like a dick it's like the head and then it's of got a dick. His, his and it's got the little mustache. hitler stash and the comb over right at the top of the head oh my god that's awesome whoever made that is a genius yes who, who is, let's give a prop. um illustration by it's a it's a guy by cool. barry Knobloch or Knobloch. It's K N O B L. Barry Knobloch? Probably not. That's not a real name. <laughs> Barry Knobloch. <laughs> <I> can... <laughs> That's got to be made up. Because of, because of the knob part, maybe. I would almost search Barry Knobloch on Google and then search like illustrator or something behind it or yeah. artist. Barry Knobloch artist. You've gotta... Because I don't, I, I'm, I'm predisposed to say that's not real. He's on LinkedIn. Uh, so well, that might not be the right one. Artist though. after that. Yeah. I'm sorry. There's other Barry Knobloch in the world, true. too. That's like, true. we're just being rude. The artist Armada. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Well, it could be. I don't know. I'm not seeing really much of anything here popping up. I. You maybe. I, I think it must be. Up. <laughs> sure, my, I, I'm holding somebody. out that it's real. I'm going to say okay. that. Okay. Okay, we don't know. If, if Barry, if, if you are a real person and you're out there, we're sorry for laughing, but that's kind of a... It's an unfortunate coincidence. Is Barry short for anything? Is is It's a, like a real I think, I think a, full I name. think Barry might be short for Bernard. Barry? I, Bartholomew? Well, Bartholomew, maybe. Bernard, I can see that. Okay, I just yeah. wondered if it was like a real name in its own yeah. right. Yeah, I mean, I, I used to work with a guy that named Barry, and we just knew him as Barry, but... I feel like he said his actual full name would have been Bernard. I dated a guy, and um, his name was Randy, and I was just so sure his name was Randall. Like, And he's yeah. like, no, my name is Randy. It's on my birth certificate that way. It like, was not short for anything. I was like, you were given a nickname. <laughs> well, it's like, you know, my name's Chad. So many people think it's short for Chadwick. Chadwick, and yeah. I could see how that... Like there's, and, and it kind of bugs me. Like, I just... It's, never really struck me but there's like very few people that i will let get away like i have to already have a rapport with them that i will let get away it's not like i really give them a lot of shit about it or anything but it's just one of those like otherwise it bugs me but there's like two or three people that's like one of my aunt's friends and there's like one girl that I all work right with they'd have to say it with like a victorian accent like chadwick or yeah maybe i'm sorry that's there was a lady I knew in the South, and she was such a... You could tell she had, like, had a cotillion, and she was such a Southern belle, and her name was Barbara, and I could not say it like that. I looked at her, and I had to say, Bob. Barbara. I was like, Barbara. <laughs> and she, even she was like, why? And I was like, I cannot say it any other way, Barbara. <laughs> the, I know why. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Yeah, I don't know why. I, That's why. But she from... was so, like upright and like just proper and proper yeah. yeah that's pretty funny well, well, um yeah. the only other real story that i even saved for us to talk about on this because i figured i've passed that we can We're just, just gonna make up shit yeah um jared fogel of subway fame air quotes fame um not so much anymore but um this this hit home like literally hit close to home for us because yeah he's I didn't here realize. in indianapolis which is, oh, Indianapolis! I thought he was more like. Well, he's in, in he's in Central Indiana. Okay, I thought. Wow. Now he he went to college at IU Bloomington. <sighs> okay, that's where he. I don't I don't know, if you know how much of the story you know, but like the whole point of Jared's rise to fame was he did the Subway Diet before it was the Subway Diet. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Which I was know. basically like you know he would eat Subway. I don't know if he was eating it twice a day or just once a day, but it was at least once a day he was eating Subway, plus he was walking and stuff like that. Okay. Years ago, like after he had already... Oh, I had a chance to get a Subway cutout of Jared Fogel life-sized, and I regret that I don't own it right now. 
Because how much fun could you have with that? Ooh. Like now? Uh, man, maybe. I don't know. That'd just be like one he more thing. He would be thing. a Halloween decoration, Indeed. I tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing scarier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you th- always kind of think he was kind of scary? He was kind of, he always had that like kind of a creeper vibe look to him. Like his robot smile. Do you I have remember? a hard time picturing it now. Oh, you need they to don't. look at it. There's a picture. Oh, of he's, not he, smiling. he's not smiling in that picture. Oh, there, there he is. There's is. another one there where he's smiling. Is. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of a fake looking smile. But the reason I it's bring because it up... he shows too much bottom teeth. <gasps> Nobody does that. Yeah. Like smile at me right now. You're not gonna show yeah. your bottom teeth like yeah. that. Yeah. And you're not gonna line them up like that. Yeah. Like you have to really uncanny. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But the reason I bring that up is you know I worked down at IU Bloomington for a while. Oh, Back did you day. meet him? Oh no, this was after. This was long after oh, he was a thing. But I remember his whole thing was like, "Oh, I, you know, I, I made a point to go to Subway and stuff like that." I had somebody point out to me. At least this is how I remember it. I may be wrong about this, but this is the memory that I have. Is somebody right at the edge of campus? I remember there being just this little hole in the wall Subway, which is most of them. I mean, they they're small. You can fit them in wherever. But right above it was some apartments. And they the, and the person told me, he's like, you see right over there? That's where Jared used to live. Above the subway. Yes. In the apartment. That's what I was told. Now, whether or not that's true is a whole other story. I heard he walked. He would walk to it. But if he's just walking from... Upstairs to downstairs, exactly. That's kind of my point. It that wasn't, was the whole mythology. It wasn't that he... I don't know that it was necessarily that he went out of his way to do it as much as it was, it was convenient. It him. was like, oh, turkey's my favorite, and I'll cut out mayo today. And then he's like, oh, my God, I'm losing weight. All right. <laughs> the chicks are going to line up. I don't know. All right. Anyway, but so, yeah, I don't think he really went out of his way to do. I think it was just kind of a weird side effect that happened I, of the convenience of having a subway right there. I want to know who got a hold of who. Like, did one of his friends... Co- shout out to subway hey this guy's losing a bunch of weight and all he eats is subway or jared himself contacted subway like i lost a lot of weight and i love subway i want some free ones yeah like sign me up i'll i'll be a spokesperson i wonder how that i don't know why i don't know why this is my jared fogel voice <laughs> i know you're giving him such a stupid voice I know. i'm college educated damn it yeah. i went to iu <laughs> it's a bad rep for iu <laughs> right i now. know and it's terrible, and I apologize to everybody at IU. You <laughs> walked around that campus. Oh, I did too. I mean, like I said, I worked there for about a year and a half. Okay. And had friends that uh, went to school there. And that's how I, that's that's where my college party experience, like the two or three college party experiences that I had <laughs> happened at IU. Because I just, I just went to like Ivy Tech. It's just like a state community college. Because what I wanted to go to school for are, there wasn't any local college, oh. site colleges that were teaching that yet, which is like graphic design and stuff like, like what uh, Cassie does. Oh, okay. And uh, which I don't do anymore. I, I I got all the way through it. Like I got to the last class and was like, I'm sick of this. Like I don't want this to be the rest of my life. What really? Yeah, mom and dad were pissed. Oh, my parents didn't pay for my. College. Oh yeah. Oh, they were mad. Um, I made it through, and I made it through so efficiently, because I always knew I wanted to do journalism. I made it through so efficiently that I had to, like, make up two bullshit classes, because I had done so well in picking classes that cross-counted toward toward my requisites. So you didn't have enough credits. Yeah, they were like, you need to take a stress and relaxation. I'm like, I'm not kidding. I had to take a stress and relaxation (laughs) course, (laughs) along with another bullshit, probably when I needed the least. Real gross. Real fat. Anyhow, Jerry... (laughs) Who may have this happen to him sometime in the future? Yeah, which I, mean, I think is going to happen. That, and that's the whole point. Yeah, see, this is and this is the reason that we do this show. Because that was just okay. <laughs> yeah, for me to see, do. yeah, that was okay for her to do. Like we started talking about Jared, and we're talking about people slitting throats now. Yeah, but which might bring it full circle. You never know. So Jared, if you don't know, Jared Fogel was everybody knows Jared. He was a subway spokes guy. He got caught with. One, he got caught with child porn on his computer in his house. And then Which, he also... When it first came out, they were like, no, it's it may his... Not, it's somebody else's it's like, assistant, assistant. It's his personal something. assistant. Yeah, and the, uh, so everybody believed that for a while. Then we're like, no. No, it was actually him. 
But even more so, he got caught, like, he was secretly recorded or whatever, actually talking about encounters with yeah. kids and, you know, the younger, the better, the, all this really weird, creepy shit. Um, so, yeah, he's in jail now. And the point of the article is basically he, he's gained, like, 30, 40 pounds back. He looks He like does shit. look heavier even making his way to the courthouse in that Yeah, court. like, he looks like shit. Which, he you know, if, if you're stressed, if you're stressed, you're going to eat more. He's getting the mayo on the It was subway either mail. eat more or don't eat at all and he chose turn into a skeleton idiot. Yes. He ate more. Um, but they say he buys like pastries from the commissary. If you scroll down, I saw something. They're, oh, really? like, they're like, he's known to eat eight in one sitting right up there between his... Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, he's a stress eater, clearly. <laughs> he loves cake day in the dining hall <laughs> twice a week and buys honey buns. By the box. Um, yeah. Um, he's, he's not going to make it out of prison. Do you think? Generally, generally, from what I understand, like, child rapists and pedophiles and stuff like that usually have a, a lot harder time in prison because I've all heard, the guys I've there heard. stick yeah. up, like to stick up for the kids and turnabouts, play or pay. Yeah, fair play. Right. So, that's probably... <laughs> oh! Somebody had a little Facebook thing on here. They took a screenshot of. We have no clue who said it, but he says he has a little cushion for the pushing. He'll get in prison. Oh. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's dark and funny. Um. Oh, they call him in in prison. His nickname is Chomo, which is short short for child molester. I've never heard. I never. I've that, never heard of that one. But yeah. Um. They said he never read it out. The inmates who did it, but uh, they slap him across his cheeks to make his face red. <laughs> and, oh my god! That's the they are that's they the are, fraternity shit, not prison yeah. shit. <laughs> no, he's there. Well, no, this this isn't. I wouldn't even say it was fraternity shit. No, fraternity shit. You're trying to be part of the group. They're doing this to him, okay. shaming him. Well, like the the fraternity hazing, you know? Yeah, but that would probably be more on your butt. I don't know if they would necessarily put marks on your face. If they're if they're smacking him, I mean they're making his face red, bitch slapping him, basically. <laughs> bitch slapping him. Yeah, I mean they are. And that inmate slapped him across the cheek several times and made his face red. He just stood there stunned and then ran out of the gym. While inmates booed and called him by his prison nickname Chomo, which is short for child molester. This, by the way, is uh, an article from Distractify.com. I'll have a link to it. Um, so yeah. Um, but you know what? I think I think the best way to round this out. Um, so I'm not sure how long we've been recording now. I mean, I, I minutes, oscillate but. between like he deserves that, and yeah. then like, oh, that's mean, you know? Cause yeah. I guess what gets me is like the line, like then he ran out of the gym. I'm like, oh, he's like a little kid, like just sad. <laughs> Can I and stop it. Yeah, that's what that's yeah. what I think, and then I'm like, oh, that's not funny, you know? Yeah. And then. But you gotta keep in perspective. Got, you know, I prison's gotta, not prison's not meant to be fun. Yeah, and then I think about you know the kids. And right. It's like all right, the kids. Yeah, you know, he's he he's not gonna get off light. He's gonna go through some shit. Sixteen years he's got, and you say in those sixteen years he's not gonna make it. I don't think he'll make it. Now I don't know if I, I remember his lawyers was trying to get like some kind of a stupid slap on the wrist type sense, oh, yeah. like something really ridiculous, and it didn't go through. No, but I don't know if I'm sure there's probably like a time for good behavior type of deal. Oh yeah, it never like says that, without but... the possibility of parole. So of course he's going to yeah. be paroled early, whether it be by a matter of months or a couple of years. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be. Um, so yeah, that's really all we have to talk about that we had planned for today. Um. I do think it would be kind of fun to tell some stories, though. I'm, I'm thinking of, you know, since it was IU. <sighs> I need okay. the fan back. You need the fan oh, to turn it's back. It's too much. Yeah. You can set it to oscillate if you want. There you go. There you go. Right there, that one. Yeah, that one. There you go. Is that better? Yes. Yeah. I'll deal with my hair and your face. Whatever. Um, that breeze does feel good to kind of come across here now. God. Um. I'd open the window, but I don't want outside noise creeping. Your neighborhood in. looks quiet. There's a lot of cops in my neighborhood. Oh. Like, they're 
right there. There used to be one right there. Oh, really? Yeah. There's a lot of cops in this neighborhood, <laughs> so it's a quiet neighborhood. You, oddly enough, there's still break-ins that happen sometimes. It happens. Oh, yeah. So, I had my Tom Tom still out of my car in my driveway because I forgot to lock it one night. Oh, I always lock my car. I always do, too. It's like, I don't remember what it was like. I had to go back for grocery. My hands were full with groceries or something, and I just forgot to go back and oh. lock it. Just the one night that they decided to make the rounds. And, I mean, they, they didn't break into the car. Obviously, they just... They just checked the handle and it opened and like, hey, I had an iPod in there. They skipped it. They just, really? yeah, just grab, just grab what they saw real quick and moved on. Hmm. So oh, kind of made me mad, but now I got cars with built-in GPS. So steal that motherfucker. <laughs> what... Like challenge accepted. Your car is gone. <laughs> well, my, my car's parked in the garage better... now. So, um, but no, I was thinking I want, I want to, tell some stories just good at least one story that's kind of weird um from is this your childhood stories no this isn't a child this is more of like a college type time story Uh, just like one of the parties we went to um there's you know there was probably three or four really big parties and there's like one story that i know that i in that off chance that my friend and wife would listen. Is it there's, that illegal? A, no, no, no. It's nothing illegal. But oh. there's there's some stories that I've been sworn to secrecy on that I cannot tell. That I, I'll tell you off. Even air. without even without time, like the, the 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 cushion of time. The yeah. Really? Yeah. I I will tell you it off air. But <sighs> if stuff could get back, and I don't want to get people in trouble. All right, all right. But, I'll hold and it's not it. even anything bad, but it would just be really embarrassing. Oh, I feel like that's just awful. But it's it's a fun story, and I just, I wish so bad that I could tell you. But there was one, there was like a couple of really good parties that we had down there, and he lived he lived in an area called like Varsity Villas, which is like right. The off. name sounds weird. Yeah, it was just a bunch of little apartments. They were jam packed in. These apartments were like kind of like three floors you'd have your main floor your basement and then your upstairs mm-hmm. and they were just right off campus like they were right across the road from the football stadium and uh he uh they just they had kick-ass parties but there was like five guys that lived in this apartment essentially because there was like is that three legal is that, hang on is that right yeah because there was two bedrooms upstairs like two actual bedrooms and then in the basement there was like a little area where they had two beds set up side by side. And those were two guys that actually went to high school together. Um, so they knew each other. So they had their own little area. and then Just an area, not a room. It was just, yeah, it was, there was wow. no doors. It was like this kind of a partition area and mm-hmm. then two beds. And then a, the fifth guy had like kind of a, he brought his loft bed from the dorms and stuff. And, set it and up then they're like, so not only had, that, I'm gonna throw a party in this place. So too. the party would the party would take place on the main floor and then kind of outside. Mm-hmm. But I'll say the worst party that they had there was some guys from Martinsville that showed up. Which for people that don't know, Mar- Martinsville, there I don't know if there still is, but there used to be at least like kind of a like a KKK office. That was there. Like it's a, it's a, it can tend to be kind of a racist area. <laughs> is kind of the um, I don't know what word. I, I don't know use. of any KKK offices that are just out there operating in the open. Like but I've never yeah. seen one. Like well, yeah. I'm I mean, sure it's just kind of like a division was based out of there. Is what I was told. Yeah. I don't know where it's. At. I just I imagine it, it in a mini mall, like nails, Chinese food, KKK. Right. right. <laughs> like, um be like well they gotta buy their stuff somewhere <laughs> you know kkk mart where every day's a white sale <laughs> oh! <laughs> that's terrible but you no know, so these kids showed up and they started some shit with some of the black kids at this party oh like i've never seen okay this is what i've never seen too anybody get into a fight just purely on race like i don't yeah. like you you're there black was, there was there, there was multiple things going on because they were they they had started talking some shit. Some Wait, of friends who and started the, it? The the guys that were not, and they weren't even from. I don't think they even school at IU. I think they were probably just came in or something like that. I don't know. I don't remember the whole story. This now, Grant, keep in mind this is fifteen years ago. <laughs> 
Keep in mind, this is 1963. Like, oh, God. I'm really, I'm going, I'm trying, I was trying to think of like when this happened for me. But so, like, multiple things were kind of happening about the same time that mm-hmm. kind of led to this. But they started talking some shit first. Okay. They had been warned. About the same time, the first keg ran out. Okay. Anarchy. I remember. Yeah. So they started getting pissed that they couldn't get a beer. We were waiting for the next keg to show up. Well, I remember my buddy was kind of lit himself. He, he had been drinking a little bit. He was lit. And I remember he just kind of got loud. Like, he didn't get really obnoxious and mean. He just would be loud to be a smart ass and be loud. And I, I have this visual of him getting back and, like, yelling, just like, ah, at the guys. While, and since it was Why, they were empty, having, like, a race fight? Well, they, they, were, they were bitching at him because he was wanting them to leave. Oh. But he picks up the keg. I remember he starts picking up the keg and slamming it. Of course, it was empty, so it was a lot easier to pick but up. But it still looks impressive. But it still looks impressive. Yeah. And he's like, ah, and bangs it a few times. I'm just like, fuck. So they finally start to walk out. Like, we're like, you guys, seriously, you need to go where the cops are going to be called. Yeah. So as they're leaving, they have to, there's like a little porch area. Like, you go out the front door, and there's a little mini porch. And you have to walk past what is essentially a kitchen window which is down kind of low mm-hmm. is really weird. It's like, it's really low kitchen windows and we just hear glass break and we're just like, God dang it. So they freaking busted out the glass and the, of course still the rest of the party's going on. We just, we just happen to be up there. I'm, I'm stone cold sober. Like I'm not a drinker yet at this point. And I'm just like, holy shit, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. Oh my God, this is effed up. And so that happened. Okay, I remember. I'm gonna rewind a little bit because that that kind of sets some of the stage for the weekend. Okay, I'm still living at home. Okay, I didn't want to run off my debit card all weekend, so I went to get some cash. I remember going to get cash at the ATM machine. I, for whatever reason, I got my pin number wrong a couple of times, mm-hmm. and third time they take your card yeah they do like i kept getting numbers transposed for some reason i didn't really use the atm card that much but i knew i needed cash so i never used an atm so i so i don't have cash like i used it twice and i'm like shit i don't have cash i'm just gonna have to go i'll figure it out down there maybe tomorrow i'll get some (laughs) cash i'll try again when i get two more times and i'll get the right numbers so we get down there okay and i and i remember this is right after school started so i had actually I had lived with them for just a little bit when in, I first in the started. Five man. Well, hang on, hang on. No. In the summer, <laughs> in the summer before school started, I had started working down there. Okay, in in kind of like their graphics department stuff, mm-hmm. helping them create an online class. That was like their first online class that I you had oh, was like a, a trailblazer. It was it was like um, the history and cultures and stuff of IU Bloomington or whatever. Um, so I thought it was just going to be a temp thing. I was like, you know, those guys are gone. Do you mind if I crash there for a couple months? I'll pay oh, you guys some rent. They were gone. Okay. So they were gone okay. first. Okay. Now, by the time this happened, they had come back. Okay. But I had got used to parking in a certain area. So when I got there that weekend for the party, the actual guest parking was full. So I was like, well, I got nowhere else to park. I'll just park right here, which was like right on the other side. There was like a line. You had guest parking on one side. And then regular parking for everybody else on the other. And it was full, so I just had to come around and park on the other side. It's like, okay, we'll go move my car out later. Or yeah, whatever. yeah. Okay, no big deal. So, of course, you know, I have no cash because I almost screwed up my debit card. The windows got kicked in, okay? I remember, I think I had to sleep in my sleeping bag on the floor that night. Because the guys had come back, I didn't have a bed to sleep in. Beer-soaked floor, like... You walk and oh, you like hear. Spongy? You oh, hear. No. Well, it wasn't spongy as much as it was like. That's spongy. Like it was. You hear the crackle of the oh, stick and everything. So I had God. I had thrown my sleeping bag on the floor and just kind of like pulled my head up in it because I didn't want my head touching, touching the floor. The floor? Oh yeah, I remember we woke up and the house was just like trashed. Mm-hmm. There was butt prints up on the wall from somebody's jeans. Ew. So a girl had been standing up on a table in the corner, and, and like, it must have been, and and, like and her butt was the... she'd been leaning up or was grinding her butt up against or whatever. 
So it was like the indigo from her jeans. Yes, like on she the... it was she was hot enough and sweating. Yeah. I guess <laughs> the the stain it stained it like it made her butt wet enough that it stained the wall. So there was like these big butt print stains, like one in on each wall in the corner. Okay, it's like shit. So we go out. How do you get how do you get that off? Because this is pre like magic eraser. Era. Yeah, I know. I think they would have just had to have painted over it. Yeah. But then we go out. It's time for me to leave, and my car's gone. They had already made the rounds and, and towed, towed it. it. So I have no cash. I don't know where the car is at. Like we have to call and figure out where the car is at. My buddy has to take me to an ATM machine. And I'm like, oh my God, I have to get this right. I have to get this right <laughs> to get the cash to go get my car or else I am fucked. And luckily, luckily the first, I remember getting it the first try because I knew that I had screwed it up before I knew which one I had to do. So I got it. And I think, I can't remember. He's like, you know, go get some breakfast. And I'm like, is that oh, apartment I mean, complex? Like, what? Oh, it, I mean, but they, they acted were, like it was New York city up in there. Oh, they were, they were waiting. That's how they get their money. I guess there's a tow truck coming to get their money. Cause they were waiting. They knew certain they time. Knew Let's go. Let's get it done. Like a, a kickback. Yeah. Like this yeah. is party night. We're going to wreck <clears> these fuckers morning. Yeah. But That's so yeah, that was worst weekend ever, I think, down there. So, hmm. so yeah. So, have you ever had any party experiences? Period, like college time frame. I figured, you know, that's that's the one college story that I can get away with telling. <laughs> I figured, you know, I, might I used to go to a. I I wasn't in a sorority, uh, but I would was friendly with the guys that were in the fraternity and they had um I dated one of them and so I would go to their parties sometimes and they were always having like stoplight parties what's that where you wear green if you're single yellow red. if it's complicated red if you're taken oh wow I've never heard of that then before. they had okay angel devil like these are actually cool concepts for parties yeah. they had like angel devil parties where you either come dressed as an angel or a devil right and that's just okay your, your little themey. They I had other things too. They were always themed. They were pretty cool. Okay. Oh, but God, I remember I was, <sighs> I was just so sheltered. I think because I was, I was standing out on the porch and just you know bullshitting. They had a couch out there, right. <laughs> just sitting on the porch couch. And um, this, I remember being so grossed out because this couple was making out, and then the guy just. I'm just going to reach down this girl's pants and start like, wow, you know, right diddling her wow. right then and there. And nobody thought much of it. And I was like, ew. And <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah, you saw it or you said it? No, I, I said, said it. it like, oh. <laughs> wow. And then I kind of got the weird look. <laughs> <laughs> like, Thank you, what's bro? your problem? Yeah. <laughs> What's the matter? You ain't ever seen somebody <laughs> diddle yeah. somebody else before? I remember when I get like shocked to my core. That was one time where I was like, well, that's just not right. You know, <laughs> your sense of morality just kicks in right then. You're like, oh, welcome to college. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> wow. I wanted your advice on something. This has nothing to do with college, except it was a guy I once knew in college. Okay. So I had. This is just like the guy's perspective, or at least one guy's perspective. Of yes. advice. Okay. Okay. Um, so I, I'll post some crap on my Facebook that, that gets political sometimes. I've seen it. <laughs> so I post something on there because I, I write about the electricity grid. That's my job. Yeah. And I was just at a conference and maybe you saw this, the, um, somebody. What? <laughs> Are you fixing yourself? <laughs> yeah. I had an itch. I figured I'd fix my hair some... while I'm looking up that way. <laughs> Some energy official was like, I think it's incredible that all these gas pipe, natural gas pipelines, I think we're going to look back in 10 years and say, isn't that incredible that we use natural gas as our, you know, because natural gas is super cheap right now. Right. And I was like, that's not incredible. That's fucking stupid, like, actually. we've been doing it forever. You know, it's yeah, like, out. it's yeah. time for renewables. So I post something to that effect on my I saw. I saw the post. I remember liking yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you yeah. liked it. Yeah loved it because you no. can do that now no i did the angry face 
Oh, the anger face. I did the anger <gasps> face because I did it. Yeah. I use those and I know it's just, it's somebody's it's like, goofy. that's just because Facebook wants to track you and know, yeah. know you and surveillance shit. And I was like, yeah, but they got a little angry face on it. <laughs> but anyway, go on. Okay, so this guy starts taking issue with me on it. And I, I've known him in college. We worked on the paper together. And I was like, isn't it sad that economics, you know, are going to trump, like, what we actually need to do in the world? Like, yeah. and I didn't even think this was a liberal thing to say. This is a common sense thing to say. Yeah. Like, we should stop with the coal. We should stop with the natural gas. The prices aren't always going to be this low. It's a finite resource. It's volatile pricing. Why are we doing this? Yeah, it's low now. It's not going to be low in the future. Yeah. So pipelines are dangerous. It's a risky, like, why? A yeah. lot of them are really old and about to bust on us because right. we don't spend on infrastructure in this country. So I'm on my soapbox. And I don't think that's a liberal thing to say. And he's, well, okay. No, no, no. <laughs> Keep going. Keep going. I'm... And so he, he like, oh, blah, blah, blah. it's policy. It's economics. You can't fight economics. That's all this weird shit. Like, and he's always got something to say about, yeah. like, the stuff I post that even maybe tends a little bit towards the political and all right. I have two other friends on Facebook that I worked on the paper with okay. and they post a lot of political and liberal stuff mm -hmm. and he never comments on their shit or challenges it or anything like that, but he will like go toe to toe with me. Huh. And I was like, <clears throat> he's a Mormon. Let me okay. get that out of there. Okay. And I'm like, why? I think I think anything that you say global warming wise, natural wise, like, you know, saving energy wise, anything like that. Anything environmental. Anything environmental, period, I think is probably inherently a liberal thing almost. I mean, it, it's stupid that I it is. I feel like it's not. It shouldn't be. Right. But I think that's the... Well, well they, they demonize that's the, the that EPA. Everybody, yeah. Okay, oh, fair enough. I can see that. Yeah. So, and, and, and the reason that it is is because every, you know, you have to look at where our government's at right now. They've got so many, you know, Koch brothers and all these, you know, coal industry. But why would you do that to, like... But they're, they've got their hands in politicians' pockets, I guess is the right way. Or maybe it's the other way around. I can't remember. Somebody's they, got their They pretty much in. are the politicians at this point. Yeah. If you have money, you're a politician. And, and that's all the whole supposedly conservative side of things is the side that has that mentality, usually. Because they, they want their money... They but why keep, would my keep... stuff come under such intense scrutiny? And then he's got friends. Is it because like is it because I'm a female? Okay, so it is. So it's guys. It's, that are... The other two are guys. Okay. Oh, I should have made that clear. Oh yeah, I, I was assuming maybe guy or girl. No, or no, no, no. They're guys. They're guys, and okay. they're they're left alone. Is he? Made, I was wondering if he maybe he's closer friends with them that he doesn't want to get on their bad side. But with you, it's just like fuck it. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> But that's happened before too. With, <laughs> it was before hoes. Like I know these, <laughs> uh, I know these white, almost angry all the time dudes that you know either I know them from college or acquaintances or, and like, why do they always have something negative? Like if if I see uh -huh. somebody, whoa, I see I see my my pro life friends sticking some shit up. Mm -hmm. And then I see him sticking shit up about that Bernie sign cut in half right now. And I'm oh, like, I know. That's but not I don't, how it works. I don't post anything. I'm like, okay, you're talking communism. Mm, mm. All right. I'll, yeah. be, I'll be quiet. I, I, reel, I reel back And so I don't do, much. I don't post on it unless somebody blatantly put a pro-Trump thing up and I was like, oh, you're okay. fucking stupid. And I couldn't yeah. hold back then. But that is the only time. Like, I will leave people alone. Yeah. Pretty much. Unless, there's, there's unless I think they're dangerous. Yeah, there's Trump. a lot of stuff that I have to just let go because it's like family or friends of family and stuff oh, like that. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I need to put this person in their place, but I can't because of the fallout that will happen. You know what's great about my husband? He just doesn't, he just doesn't, he doesn't care. care. He's like, if if there's it. relatives out there, he doesn't like it. He's like, oh, you <laughs> son of a bitch. But because somebody had posted like um, something about the Black Lives ver Matter uh, yeah. versus All Lives Matter. Yeah. And I had just found this great like analogy that somebody had posted on Twitter about it. Yeah. And they said, 
saying all lives matter in response to the black lives matter thing is like somebody like people being at a dinner party two people clearly don't have food on their plates right and they look up and they're like well they should be fed and somebody's like mm, everybody should be fed and i was yeah. like that's a great analogy for it you know yeah. and so he posted that right like it's got to be like his aunt or something yeah. and the next thing you know her post is just disappear whoo shit i'm like <laughs> damn scott you're cold like <laughs> And he's like, I don't care. <laughs> and I'm like, I, I do care. <laughs> I <don't>. Done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. How long yeah. have we been going for? I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. Been, I can't see a clock. But no, as so. far as party and hard college stories. That's about it. Oh, man. One time I mixed. Oh, my God. I mixed weed and whiskey and threw up so hardcore that my glasses flew into the toilet and i was so drunk wow. that i'm just like well gotta get those you know like i didn't <laughs> gotta see a, yeah like i need those <laughs> i wasn't drunk enough to just stick them back on my face you, but... you had enough sense to wash them off. oh god yeah i've gotten i, I don't anymore though get drunk like that oh my i never gosh. get drunk i thought i thought i was speaking a language nobody else could understand that night <laughs> and they're like no amanda that's english and i said i need a translator <laughs> for this that's oh, funny. I got so drunk. Yeah, I've only been drunk twice. What? In, in the first time. The first time was like solely to set out, like, let's see how, what it takes to get Chad drunk. So I remember being with some friends. Like, I went up to her apartment on the north side of town and planned ahead to spend the night there. So I slept on the couch. And I remember there was like, you know, several shots that happened. I think they were giving me just like some vodka and orange juice and stuff in between. We were playing cards. So I had, you know, had a constant stream going essentially. And then girls who apartment it was her boyfriend showed up well then he decided to do a couple shots with me too so i'm laying there so they go to bed i'm laying on the couch and it was probably you know 15 minutes later after laying down it's like oh this is happening like the room started spinning like okay something's gonna come up i need some fresh air or something so she lived on the second floor so i was like i go out on the balcony it's like oh, fresh air cold air on my face <laughs> Oh, here it comes. And over the balcony, it went into the bushes down below. Really? Yep. And I think only once or twice I think I got sick. And then after that, I was like, oh, I feel good now. Went in, passed right out, slept it off, got up. And, oh, man, my head hurts. You have to drink, you have to drink water. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that. It's because you get severely you get dehydrated. It took me years to figure yeah. that. I was like, oh. I was like, oh, man, my head hurts so bad. Why am I so sore? And it's because I didn't drink any water had no clue i just nobody they didn't tell me and i didn't know to ask there were some when i first met my husband there were some unfortunate photos online of me i wanted to go as the saint Pauli girl for i don't know what that is the saint Pauli girl on the beer she's got the beer she's like a german oh and she's got okay. like a lace-up corset and okay. her hair is up she's maybe got a little heart necklace gotcha on. okay i i can there were some unfortunate about. pictures of me because we had gone to somebody's halloween party in the barn and they had set up a little pole so like there was this photo I'm... of me tagged like <laughs> flying around a pole and like in like this beer girl oh costume get away and i'm like that's not who i am. i couldn't he's like wow <laughs> and um he's like what have i gotten myself into <laughs> my friends and i had gone skinny dipping before well it was like a yearly thing to go skinny dipping but it was in the dark up in the woods everybody was drunk nobody remembers what anybody looked like or and i was trying to convince him that that was and so I, he must have thought I was you, crazy. You, you and I have lived very different lives. I'm interested to see all these stories that like come from here on out to compare to my life. Because wow, I didn't. Do That's shit. not that. I didn't do shit. I, I really. It's not that. It's not that nuts. You just. I don't know. How did, yeah, so how does pretty... that's yeah I never I, I never I was went across my mind. To... Okay, hang on, hang on. I got I, I got to ask us though. So how does this work? Like, do you do you strip down before you jump in, or do you jump in and then while you're in the water, then strip down? It was the plan all along to go skinny. To, it was um... because I'm because I'm thinking logistically. Like afterwards, you would want dry clothes. So I I mean in my head it's summer, and. It, they have a raft. It's, okay. it's somebody's really private property, too. Okay. Like, it's somebody's hunting property that incidentally has, like, 
I'm and it's not even a nice like there's seaweed yeah. at the bottom too so you're yeah. like running through the weeds you're and like, stuff to get there and i hate yeah. that yeah but yeah. I, and um it was the goal because the ho the party host he was my boyfriend's friend okay had well my ex and he had gotten it into his head that like that's what's gonna happen to make this a really epic party he was always trying like he's so cute he was always trying to like he's what can i head. do to top this party from the last party he's like the last party was good but I need greatness. Like, he would post, like, these really lengthy <laughs> Facebook posts about how great the party was. And we all got way into it. Like, we're here to make your party great. Like, his name was Mad Mike. <laughs> like, it, that's what's really... I don't know what... I don't know just to call him yeah. Mike because he was Mad, Mad Mike. Mike. Okay. So, and, and he would, like, get real excited and be like, there's 30 days till this epic party. And we're like, yeah. It's like, so, I, need, I need... It wasn't that we even wanted... And a trampoline and... A porta potty, obviously. We need a no, place for people no to strip down. No porta potty, potty just a just, the, just woods. the woods. Yeah, just the woods, which there were a lot of. A potato gun. Okay. Which I refused to touch that thing. It was like a PVC contraption. Oh yeah. Homemade. With the hairspray, I was like, no, oh, fuck no. They like they fill it with the hairspray and then light and then light, light it. Yeah. And then the potato, and it doesn't come out whole. Like it, it's, like. So wow. he said the thing that would make this really epic above all, you know, is just going and it was so, it was so Midwest. It's like a Kid Rock song, really. Oh my God. <laughs> it was so, yeah. We were really okay. like kind of hillbillies. And so we we're like, that's what we got to do. And so he comes around like, it's time. And we're like, all right. So we all just go into our tents and come out naked. Like it's pitch dark. So we're like. It's time. And the stupid thing is, like, we don't just strip it. We just come out of our tents naked, like, here, we're here. We're ready for you, Mad Mike. <laughs> and so we all just, like, ran down there. And wow. yeah, then we just got out, and then just clothes were put back on. Oh, it, wow, nothing this... sexual. It was really odd. We hung out with such different people. Like, I went to a really small school. There was, like, 36 of us that graduated yeah, from we, my class. Yeah, we okay. compared that before, and, yeah. And... My group of friends was like, oh, this half wasn't of that. high school. This was college. Oh, okay, too. So but but just thinking of like the group of friends, um, you know, the wildest thing that we ever did is like we we TP a teacher's house. I never because TP'd. because he told us that we could go TP oh, his I've heard house. This story, yeah. So yeah. it's just like that's what we were it's like. We did something wild, but only with permission. Like we just, I didn't. we were just the good wholesome kids. My brother it was. was weird. Awful. My brother was an awful, like, like straight up vandal. Like this kid was pretty nasty to him. He just yeah. stuck a knife in the side of his pool, his above ground pool, oh, and, and just like, please. and it was just oh, like, oh my knocked god. him over. Like did that in the middle of the night. Oh my like, god. Oh god. His friend wanted McDonald's one night, so they just, so he's like, here we go, and I guess he. I don't even think he was drinking, but he's like, I'm just going to sit in lawn job McDonald's for five solid minutes because there was an empty lot to the side of McDonald's. So he just sits there like in his Jeep. And then oh he God. decides to go through the drive through after that, like casually, like, <laughs> I want some chicken nugs. <laughs> and they were like, <laughs> then the, the McDonald's employees were really cool. They wait until he gets to the second window. They hand him the food. And they're like, we've called the police. And he's like, better go. <laughs> Like, who, like, those are some sweet employees. Like, they probably watched him the whole time. Like, well, I've worked up an appetite. Guys, guys fire up the grill. This guy's going to be hungry. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's a good story. Yeah. And that's what I hope to get out of this show, I think, is the document. Just the stupid. Just the stupid stuff that we do. And if anybody hears this, if you guys want to share anything, I don't do a know, whole lot of stupid stuff anymore. See, I I never really did. Oh, my family. I mean, there was a few up, things here and there, maybe that I'm sure I'll think of. But. We go up on the river and get real wild, uh, canoeing. And that's it's family stuff. Yeah. My brother got it's out of hand. It's different though when with your family, though. Well, no, my brother kind of got out of hand when we were skiing, and my dad just passes him. He's like, "Calm down, or I'll put you down." <laughs> And I thought that was That's so funny. Like, my dad's still going to put him down, like, after all these years. <laughs> I remember, I don't remember how old I was, but I remember I got in trouble for something. I was, like, probably in junior high or something. And I said some shit to my mom. It'd be, like, you know, talking back or whatever. And I swear my mom, like, picked me up and body slammed me. 
Like, she's like, you will listen to me. <laughs> like, oh. you're not too big for me to put you in your place. I didn't get in trouble in school. Like, never. Yeah, I didn't either. I, it took me a while. I was pretty much a silent kid, and then it only Something took me happened. after, like, after. pretty much sadly after graduation Especially. before I'm like, oh, it's okay to be a person and, like, yeah. talk, you know? So. Yeah. Hmm. I'll tell you what, I think uh, I think that's a good spot to stop <laughs> okay. for now. <laughs> I mean, before, like, you know, before, because I can't think in my head initially of where I could take that conversation unless you have something else. That... I have nowhere to go. Okay. If this is like, and if this is like, we got to talk about wild party stories. I mean, hey. I don't have. Well, and I didn't either, <laughs> but. But that was just like one thing, I, you know. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna we'll, find a defined topic each time. We can find a defined topic and then where it goes, we'll see. So you know, eventually we might talk about cars. Oh, I got nothing pets. to say. Just like the different cars we had, and then stories about. Oh, that. that's cool. Or you know, pets we've had. Or <gasps> no, I can't. Our oh favorite my gosh, movie. we like, have to talk about pets. Yeah, or movies we've had, or just jobs, like stupid job stories. You know, anything that I think people could relate to. I think it's where I want this show to go. So much of my life um, is embarrassing, though. And that's what makes it great. <laughs> so, anyway, I think I think this inaugural episode has probably gone on long enough. Probably, yeah. Um, I hope that there are people that's going to watch this. I hope you guys like it. Because um, I want to do this for a little bit more. I mean, this is more... I think for me, this is something like... I, I know I have all these stories that I would like to have document for, po for posterity <laughs> reasons and because they're fun stories i mean i know i know how to tell a story if mm -hmm. nothing else i know how to tell a story mm -hmm. i think um and i like and i like to tell stories and i love to talk and you know this is a way to do that um and it's and it's something more light you know versus the heavy stuff that we didn't talk about on the other show um you know we're gonna eventually have a splash screen right now we got nothing i'll just come up with some generic text that's oh that's me i'm yeah. gonna try uh, you know i got my once a month thrift store shopping tomorrow yeah i'm only allowed once a month and we can talk about that at some point too i love that she, she's a thrift sh <laughs> store shopper big time yeah so i got i'm allowed one to go out once a month and that tomorrow's my big day or saturday if i miss it but okay and then this weekend I gotta draw a logo. Yeah, she's gonna. I'm attempt, on it. She's gonna attempt to draw something for us. I think. Okay. I hope. Hope so. Um, guys, we leave you. I have no fun. You know, outro tag or anything to say yet. I'll think of something. Um, but in the meantime, thanks for listening. Um, we hope you're still here, and we hope you'll come back. Have a good night. Bye.